just thinking about how crowded Bangkok nowadays. We have around 10.5 million people, while in the past, 12 million people were forced to become a slave. Just compared to the size of Bangkok, how cruel will it be? In 1619, a Portuguese slave ship traveled across Atlantic Ocean with a whole field of human cargoes of captive African from the southwestern Africa. The men, women, and children most likely to endure a horrific journey bound of life of enslavement. Almost half of captives had died by the time the ship was seized by the two English pirate ships. The remaining Africans were taken to the Point Comfort, a port near Jamestown, the capital of English colony of Virginia, which the Virginia Company of London had established 12 years earlier. The colonist John Roth wrote to Sir Edwin Sandys of the Virginia Company that in August 1619, the Dutch man of the war arrived in the colony. Quote, Bored nothing but twenty and odd negroes, which the governor and Cape Merchant bought for rituals. In quoted, the Africans were almost likely put onto work on tropical fields that had recently been established in the area. Forced labor were not uncommon. Africans and Europeans had been trading goods and people across Mediterranean for centuries, but enslavement has not been based on race. The trans. Atlantic slave trades had began in the early 15th centuries, introduced a system of slavery. It was a commercialized, racialized, and in heritage. Enslaved people were not seen as people at all, because they were bought, sold, and exploited. Though so people of African descent, free and enslaved, were present in North America as early 1500s. The sale of 20 in the odds. African people said the cause of what would become slavery in the United States nowadays. The first type of slave we will address is the indentured slaves. These were the slaves that did not get paid at all. In exchange for their labor, they received passage to the colonies and nominal food and board after they arrived. Slaves and their masters enter into indentures to specify the length of their employment. The duration of the agreement could be for a set period of time or until the servant turned a specified age. Some people took up indentures to pay for their own voyage to America or to get out of debt and poverty. So many people were beaten that they later died there were numerous crippled or disfigured servants. During the European and American exchange goods, nearly half of African captives were taken from the coast. European owned and operated slave ships. The work of kidnapping new victims were general, left to the West Africans. Band of slaveries would roam the African countryside, preying on the villager who lets their guard down. At first, European and American demand a small trade in humanity, but later demand increase. The main purpose of this slavery trades is for labor and domestic service. However, it didn't stop, because the European trade benefits Africa by providing a host of tempting goods such as textile, ironware, exotic drinks, and firearms, all in exchange is for African captives. Long before Europeans arrived, Igbos in Nigeria enslaved other Igbos as punishment for crimes, for the payment of debts, and as prisoners of war. The slaves were sometimes sacrificed in religious ceremonies and buried alive with their masters to serve them in the next life. When the transatlantic trade began in the 15th century, the demand for slaves spiked Igbo traders began kidnapping people from distant villages. Viewing their slaves as criminals, debtors, and prisoners of war from rival tribes, African kings traded them with the white for manufactured goods 
weapons, and rum. By selling them, the kings enriched their own realms and strengthened them against neighboring enemies. African kingdoms prospered from the slave trade, but meeting the Europeans' massive demand created intense competition. Slave repays other criminal sentences, and capturing slaves became a motivation for war. To defend themselves from slave raids, neighboring kingdoms needed European firearms, which they also bought with slaves. The slave trade had become an arms raid, altering societies and economies across the continent. Triangle slave trade, one significant slave trade process in the 16th centuries, is triangle trade or transatlantic slave trade. The slave trade can be considered as the second of the three stages of the triangle to show what caused slaves move over the Atlantic Ocean. This includes three ports or religions, which is West Africa, America, particularly in the northern part, and Europe. All these ports are sent by Atlantic Ocean. There are 10 to 12 million Africans who were trade to be a slavery in America. They proposed to use them to do a plantations, textiles, sugar, mines, and also grow the rice and tobacco. The triangle trade can be described as an export and import back and forth within the land. From this act, Europe stand in the big position. A Europe ship would leave a Liverpool with a cargo of manufacturers' goods. Then, it would be trade for Africans who were enslaved. As the English, French, and Dutch colonized the smaller West Indian in the 17th centuries, they also created plantation. At first, the manual labor was done by poor whites. Some were indentured servants. But black slavery eventually surpassed white bondage in these colonies. In the following centuries, English and French merchant controls about half of transatlantic slave trade. Africa also wants something from Europe, such as guns or clothes. And they also trade something back to Europe, such as gold and ivory. Then, African trade the workers, or what we call the slave, to North America to return the raw materials from that place. From 1525 to 1866, 12 and a half million Africans were taken from their homeland and forcibly transported across the Atlantic, a journey that approximately 2 million of them would not survive. By the turn of the 18th century, European merchants were building vessels capable of transporting hundreds of enslaved people per journey. These ships had extra portholes for ventilation, weapons mounted on deck in case of rebellion, and additional compartments added below deck to take on more human cargo. Before boarding the ships at African port cities, enslaved people were stripped of their clothing and remaining possessions, and had their heads forcibly shaved. During boarding, which could take weeks or even months, enslaved people lived on the deck of the ship in a temporarily wooden house constructed by the crew. The crew also installed netting around the deck of the ship, designed to catch those enslaved who might choose death over forced servitude. Once moved below deck, enslaved people would find themselves stuffed into compartments with ceilings as low as four and a half feet. They were segregated by gender and age. Adult men were kept separately and shackled in pairs. Women usually left unchanged in their designated compartment, and children were often free to move around the ship. There were no sanitary facilities of any kind. Enslaved people were forced to relieve themselves where they sat, creating hellish conditions when combined with the heat and lack of ventilation below deck. What did they use with slave? Equipment. Since the beginning of the slave trade in North America, when they arrive at that place, there are some equipments that used with the slave in purpose to punish them. The equipment, which includes a replica, made as a copy of the slave, slave's neck breast or collar. The collar was put on an enslaved person's neck and as a punishment, and was designed to prevent them from resting, as well as making escape more difficult. A silver branding iron used to brand a slave. This equipment can separate into two categories. First, the slave that used for trading companies and slave to use to do plantation. When enslaved people were purchased, they would be branded with the red hot iron on their chest and shoulder.
a double leg shackle. Date from the 18th centuries, this tool used to bind together the leg of two slaves when they were being to move one location to another location, or when the slaves were forced to work together in the field. But for the real purpose is to slow their movement. To put in another words, they are where the slave will run away. A chain is one of the branding tools. This was hidden in fire and used to write the names of the slave merchants on their skins. Also, it can be used as to pierce their lips of a slave who was working in the field to prevent them from eating. The slave usually have two meals per day at 10 a.m. and 4 p.m. The food they eat is such as rice, yams, and beans, or sometimes grains. In order to monitor food intake and prevent slaves from starving themselves, the process of eating for sometimes direct by signal from the monitor will indicate when slaves should dip their fingers or wooden spoons into their bowls and when they should swallow it. It was a responsibility for the monitor to report slaves who were refusing to eat and the penalty is a forced feeding by using mouth opener and force them to swallow the food down. And when they were arrived in America, they were treated worse than animals, at the point that they had to eat the leftover what animals won't eat. The death of slaves. During the slave trade, there are not appeared only the hard work, torture, brutal, and powerlessness of slaves. But from this point, it is also the disease that caused death that happened in the 16th to 18th century. When the slave died from disease, the labor will always find new and slave to replace the deceased one. Most of the children in Caribbean died from this disease. A frequent cause of the date was intestinal worms and hygiene, which come from the flood and water they consume. Poor hygiene. The problem is the way they drink water. Where the water comes from is from dark heaps that are nearby the place they lived. It was not made better by the fact that the water course was supposed to use with clothes, washing, and bathing, not for drinking. Infectious disease, the smallpox. In the 18th centuries, the smallpox was widespread. Furthermore, it can move faster because it was infected by touching. Ill from tropical climate. Absolutely, the slaves never live in a good place. People were stuck living together in a small space which brought them to have a weak immune system. The immune is weak with the age and particularly through exhausting physical work such as enslaved labors. Elephant foot, the disease that causes grotesquely swollen legs or sex organs. Another disease that considered in the same group as yolks. May I ask you how to treat you, Mrs. Stu? So, look at me. And I the woman? Look at my arm. I have plowed and planted and gathered into barns, and no man could hate me. And I the woman? I could work as much and eat as much as a man, when I could get to it and bury the lash as well. And ain't I the woman? I have born 13 children and seen most of them sold into the slavery, and when I cried out, a mother's grief none, but Jesus hurt me. And ain't I the woman? Most slave quarters were constructed of wood and many were log and earth fast structures with no foundations. Those located closer to elite plantation houses were generally better built, with wooden frames and masonry chimneys and foundations. The earliest cabins had no foundations and were erected around timbers set in the ground. This method of construction was shared by most other Chesapeake peak buildings, including the homes of enslavers. The post supported a relatively slight wooden frame, which was enclosed by clapboard, sides, and roof, and heated by one or two fireplaces with wooden chimneys. Other cabins were made of locks joined together at the corners and supported by only a slight masonry foundation, or none at all. The most common house forms were single-cell buildings, typically accommodating a family unit and duplexes, which consisted of separate rooms accommodating two different family groups. After the enslaved population increased naturally through reproduction, most enslavers 
quickly abandoned barracks style housing in favor of family focused lock and frame quarters. By the mid 1700s, locks were the most popular building material for slave houses on outlying quarters and were used for service buildings and the houses of many whites and free blacks as well. Throughout history, slaves fell usually into three categories. First, physical labor, the most common form. This ranged from building roads and buildings, over cooking to cleaning, and cleaning out the toilets. Sex slaves, pretty self-explanatory. These slaves were often trained in maintaining the body of their owner in optimal condition, so they had limited skills as hairdressers and manicures. The third one is intellectual labor. Training a person to read, write, and learn accountancy skills was very expensive. Training a slave meant that slave could not look for a new employer, making it, in the long run, a safer investment. Besides planting and harvesting, there were numerous other types of labors required on plantations and farms. Enslaved people had to clear new lands, dig ditches, cut and haul woods, slaughter livestock, and make repairs to buildings and tools. There are also more like picking cottons, harvesting sugarcane, planting and harvesting rice, harvesting tobacco, growing and harvesting coffee, and building railroad. <laughs>